Good morning, Antioch. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's put our hands together. So this morning's scripture is going to be coming from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6, and I'm going to be reading the NIV version. And it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I've just read Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. The NIV version. God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Lord, I pray that you be with our service on today. Let us have a true worship experience in a special way. Bless everyone that's here. Bless ones that may be on their way. And bless the ones that are watching on the live stream in a special way. We pray that you continue to heal and comfort the ones that need healing and comforting during these times, Lord. And we just thank you for today being Easter and what you did for us over 2,000 years ago when you died on the cross. I pray that you help people to realize what the true meaning is if they don't, Lord. And we just pray that you bless our pastor on today as he stands to bring forth the word. Help him to preach it with power and gladly so that someone will be touched in a special way. And we pray that you continue to keep us covered under your blood so that the people of the world won't do us no harm because, Lord, you are our refuge, our strength, and our security. Please keep us in your care. We pray for ones who don't know you get to know you so that they allow your peace and love to work on their minds and hearts, Lord. So, Father, we love you. We thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We're going to open up our praise and worship and devotional service. If you have a song on your heart, testimony, just blend in with us. We're going to open up with our congregational hymn. If you would turn with us to page 104, he arose. We'll sing all four verses. Hear us, 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 hear us
tag team this one, so I'm gonna start it out and finish. Well, there's a lily in the valley, and it's mine.
come on, let's bless him. I said, come on, let's bless the Lord this morning. Now, you doing that for me, that's okay. I said, let's bless the Lord, the King of Kings. The Lord, this is Resurrection Sunday. Y'all sit down like he's still in the tomb. God is not dead. He's alive. Does anybody believe that this morning? The pastor, how do you know he's alive? Because he's living on the inside of me. Is there anybody in here to say you've got this spirit dwelling on the inside of you? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Did you come to exalt his name this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. If you're able, and give God some praise. Because he's worthy. It's nothing that you did. You ain't been that good. It's not by coincidence, not by happenstance. It's only because of his grace and his mercy that you are able to be here on today. And we should not take that for granted. That every day that God gives you, you need to give him some praise. He says that everything, everything that, you got your neighbor say, neighbor, are you breathing? Well, then you need to give God some praise. Oh, he said that everything that has breath, praise you the Lord. Truly, it's good to see all of you. You all look beautiful this morning. I pray that you are doing well. You're doing well because you're sitting here. And I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Glad to see my extended family here this morning. Amen. God is good. Amen. just need to bless the name of the Lord every day of our lives. Somebody wants to be here praising God this morning. If, if I could call one of our deacons, he would tell you that he would want to be sitting right there. But I got a call last night. He's back in the hospital. Been going through trial after trial after trial, sickness after sickness after sickness. If Reverend Jarrell was sitting right there, he'd tell you no place he would rather be. So because you are able to be here this morning, because you've got all activity of your limbs this morning, because you are in your right mind this morning, that's enough in itself for you to open up your mouth and give God some praise. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Stop your feet, whatever you got to do. morning I get up real early and I could hear the birds <laughs> chirping. Wasn't even light yet. Still dark outside. But they had enough sense to say Lord let me give you some praise. Yeah. Because you've given me another day. Yeah. Come on let's put our hands together one more time. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to have our scripture and prayer by Reverend Cornelius Joyce followed by our offering. And the angel answered and said 
unto the women. Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, all hell, and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. May God add a blessing to his red words this morning. May we pray. Father God in heaven, as we come to you this morning, on this Easter Sunday, the day that you rose. We stand here, dear Heavenly Father, while we have this chance and this opportunity to say thank you, Lord. For how you have kept us and brought us through this year. And brought us through this month, dear Father. You spurred our lives once again to see another Easter. And for that, dear Father God, we stand here and say thank you. But we still yet have the breath in our bodies to breathe. Yes. And while we still yet have our eyes to see. And that we got our legs to continue to walk, dear Father. Yes. So many people here today, dear Lord, they take these things for granted. But Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. One more time. We thank you, Lord, because you have given us one more Sunday. Yes. Yes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are here. <laughs> and for that, we say thank you. You have given us another day's journey. Yes. Lord, we are on this side of the river. Well, <laughs> we have not crossed over yet, Lord. Yeah. But that we say thank you. So many people been here and gone down, Father, have not able to open up their eyes again and say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. But Lord, while we stand here in this congregation and in this sanctuary and in the house of the Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. We may not have this chance anymore, Lord, but for now, Heavenly Father, we say thank you. For how you died on the cross for us, Lord, you held your breath and you said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, you carried the cross for us. They put those 72 thorns in your head, Lord, and they pierced you in the side, Jesus. And they put the stripes on your back, Lord. You suffered, bled, hung, and died. You spoke not a word, dear Lord. You burrowed out our sins. You took all sickness and disease to the cross, Father. And we got a brother's life. Thank you for this change, Jesus. You done brought us through another dear Father. You held back hurt, harm, and danger. As we travel to and fro for a near. Seen and unseen danger. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. One more time. Glad to be in this number one more time. Glad to be in this number one more time. Glad to be in this number one more time. Glad to, time. to God be the glory. We give you the highest praise. Which is hallelujah to God be the glory. Thank you for how the third day you rose, Lord. Amen. And when you rose, you rose up in us, Jesus. Amen. We thank you. Thank you. Mm. A man who knew no sin, yeah. who done no sin. Thank you. Father, don't stop there. Look down upon our pastor this morning. Yeah. And remember his help, may you stand. 
give him the strength and the power of your heavenly father. Help him to walk this road in the name of Jesus. Help him to stay on this journey in the name of Jesus. We know that it gets hard sometimes. Father God, we know that he buried his cross. But I pray and ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch him right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory fill this house. Remember each and every one that's standing in this congregation now. Please remember us all, Father. And if it's not anything that you do for us anymore, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. And everything that happened to us that was good, God did. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Another sunny day. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father, because we give it all back to you. Because to you, we owe it all. Now, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let the people of God, let the people of God say amen. 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 Let us remain standing to give back to the Lord what he's so graciously given unto us. The Bible says, now this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. God loves a cheerful giver. Are you glad to give on today? Yes. Yeah. Amen. I said, are you glad to give yes. on today? Because God has always given to us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Father, I pray that you bless this offering on today. Bless the ones that were able to give and bless the ones that weren't able to, Lord. And we just pray that this offering will be an upbuilding to your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Jennifer wants to do a presentation. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning to this pastor that I, sorry, I used to be to see y'all. <laughs> Still, my family doesn't matter how far we're away, how long we don't talk to each other. Where is our little man now? Okay. And Fred had to fly back. Right? Okay. But it's good to see you all this morning. Uh, our prayers are still with you. And thank you so much for coming to worship with us. Uh, come on, Annie, y'all. Let's give them a good morning. Jennifer, yes, yeah, she used to babysit me, but 
I love y'all so much. Uh, boo boo, it's good to see you, man. I tell you, you got your own family now. Too. Man, that's that's wonderful. To God be the glory. That's your little son, is it? Oh, man. To God be the glory, man. To look at you and see the things that uh, the young man that you have become. Uh, it's truly a blessing. Uh, but I'm so glad to have y'all here today. And we have some other visitors. If you want to stand and um, stay where you're from or just. Give your name. Or, uh, good to see Johnny in the back. Amen. And his family. Good to see him. How you doing, Kevin Virgil? My grandmother, Dolly Hines. Oh. Here with my family today for uh, Easter from Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. <laughs>
have some good food, fellowship with one another. Amen. Does that sound all right, y'all? Yep. Amen. So we'll be doing that the fourth Sunday in April. And also coming up, um, the end of April is the Baptist Training Institute uh, sponsored through uh, the Forsyth County Missionary Union. Mean, y'all know that's the time when a couple years ago we hosted uh, that that um, that union. It's held at First Baptist Church. It's going to be April 29th through May 3rd from 6 o'clock to 8.15. So I have books for you now. Don't get a book if you don't think you're going to go. I have 10, 10 books, well, nine. So if you want a book, I know the ones that normally get a book. Uh, so if y'all want to get a book, um, the book is something entitled Unity or something like that for this year. So if you plan to participate, then you can get a book because they have some great classes. I have a poster on the front door and one on the rear door. You can see uh, some of the teachers that they're going to have. I'm just going to be teaching the classes. And if you've never been, it will be a great opportunity for you to go and get some good teaching because it is um, a wonderful institute. And lastly, as our mission here at Antioch Baptist Church to change lives for Christ by focusing on the kingdom agenda because we are focused on forward. And now we will have a worship selection followed by the word of God. No way. 
were sinners. Christ died for all of us. None of us were fit to live, nor were we ready to die. But I'm so glad to know today that God loved me enough that in my midst he sent his son Jesus. Is there anybody glad today? That he sent the best gift that he had to die for all of us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this another brand new day. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We realize this is the morning that you got up with all power in your hands. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Because now, if we are in relationship with you, your power resides on the inside of us. Because your word tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God, I thank you now for your indwelling power right now. So infuse me right now in the name of Jesus. That God, I will stand to preach your word with power and with clarity. That someone's heart will be pricked, that they might say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Father, touch this waiting congregation now. Open their hearts and their minds that they might hear what your word has to say to us on today. And Father, when it's all said and done, let us not only be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. Let us take your word out into a dying world and let them know that Jesus is the only way. Lord, we love you. We thank you. You take the glory. Just leave us with the blessing. And we will forever give your name the praise. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our rock and our redeemer, it's in your son Jesus' name. We pray and ask it all. And all the people of God said amen. 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 Luke chapter 24. <clears throat> I just want to look at one verse. And we stand for the reading of God's word. As we honor his word. Luke chapter 24. just want to look at verse two verses, verses six and seven. You have it, say, I have it. If you don't have it, say, wait a minute. Yes. Luke 24, beginning at verse number six, reading from the New International Version. The word of God declares, he is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day, be raised again. You may be seated. With your prayers and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I'd like to use for this thought. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the central fact of Christian history. On it, the church is built. Without it, there will be no Christian church today. Jesus' resurrection is unique. Other religions have strong ethical systems, concepts about paradise and afterlife and various holy scriptures to share about the resurrection. But Christianity has a God who became human, literally died for his people and was raised again in power and glory to rule his church forever. And after Jesus' Crucifixion. No one expected him to rise from the dead. Multitudes of people had been crucified and none of them came back to life. Why would the people of that time even consider such a possibility? Today, those who don't believe in Christ's resurrection can't understand why Christians gather in churches to celebrate what to them appears to be foolishness. However, yet this event is the foundation of our faith. Not only because the word of God speaks on it, but because believers all over the world know with certainty that Christ lives within their hearts. Those who knew and believed in Jesus didn't think he could come to life after being crucified. Joseph, who was a member of the council, asked Pilate for his body, prepared it for burial, and placed him in a tomb. And early on Sunday morning, some women came to the tomb with more spices for his body. 
If either Joseph or the women had expected Jesus to come to life, they wouldn't have made all these preparations for his burial. But even Jesus' own disciples, who had walked with him for three years, heard him teach, witnessed his miracles, and watched him raise the dead, didn't expect his resurrection. Earlier in his ministry, when he first revealed that he was going to be killed and rise on the third day, Peter denied that this would ever happen to him and was strongly rebuked by Jesus. That's Matthew 16, 21 through 23. But just as he had said, Jesus died on the cross. And when the women returned to the tomb, they discovered it was empty and the angels told them that he had risen. Only then did they remember his words about his resurrection. However, when they told the disciples, they thought the women were speaking nonsense. But Peter and John got up, ran to the tomb and discovered it was true. Jesus was no longer dead. And the Bible tells us that early that morning, the women prepared the spices and they prepared to go to the tomb. And when they got there, they found that the stone had been rolled away. And the Bible says that two men, two angels, they gleam in white clothing like light and told them, why are you looking for the living? among the dead. Come on, and how many of us have seen people that's looking for the living among the dead? Yeah. People that read the Bible for historical purposes, people that um, have a certain lingo in church, they know how to pick them up and put them down, but they have no power to deny the power of God therein. Yeah. But understand, when we have a true encounter with him, his spirit begins to dwell within us, and now we have his resurrection power on the inside of us. So what does Jesus' resurrection mean to us today? Although many people still don't believe Jesus rose from the dead, for those of us who have trusted in him as our Savior, his resurrection is not only true, but also relevant and very personal to us. That's why we should be so excited today. For us that have a true, authentic relationship with him because this is the day that he got up. Now that he got up, you can get up out of your depression. You can get up out of your lack. You can get up out of your poverty. You can get up out of your sickness because now that he got up and now that he resides in you, you have his power on the inside of you. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad to know that when things come my way, when storms come, I can look to him and say, Lord, come and see about me because I realize that I got his power on the inside of me. Is there anybody that's glad about his power on today? So because he lives, the first thing is this. We don't have to live with the loneliness of heart. We have absolute assurance that Christ is alive and living within us just as he promised. He did not leave us as orphans. Instead, he sent the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity, to indwell in our hearts, John 14, 16 through 18. And since Jesus now lives inside of us as believers through his spirit, we are never truly alone. And I know sometimes on this Christian journey, it gets lonely sometimes, don't it? You feel like you're all by yourself. You're saying, Lord, where are you? Lord, why aren't you coming to see about me? But understand, even when he's not even answering you, guess what? He's still with you. But sometimes God will fade into the background just to see if you're going to continue to pursue him. Because he said we must seek him with all of our hearts. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But those that come to him must seek him diligently. We must continue to go out to him even when we can't trace him, even when we can't feel him, and know that he's still with us, and know that he still cares about us, he still loves us. No, God has not given up on you. No matter where you find yourself today. And sometimes we feel that way that God has given up on me, that God does not love me, God does not care about me. But God loves you in spite of you. That he knew you were going to mess up last week even before you messed up. Matter of fact, some of us might have messed up last night. But he already knew, but guess what? He still loves you. The Bible says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He don't judge you. He don't condemn you. He don't beat you down. He don't throw you away. Like a bottle cap or a piece of trash. Like people do. We'll write you off in a minute. 
Do something they don't like. Let <laughs> me see how close y'all are. But people will write you off. But I'm so thankful and I'm so glad to know that God will not forget about me, that God loves me in spite of myself. Jesus was soon going to leave the disciples, but he will remain with them. The counsel of the Spirit of God will come to care for them and guide them. As he told them in John 16, he said, listen, I've got to leave you. I've got to go, but there's one coming back. The help of the comfort of the Holy Spirit, one that's going to lead you in all truth and understanding. And we need to understand today that now that we have accepted him, that he is our GPS system, he's come to lead and guide us on this Christian journey. I know sometimes you don't understand what God's doing, but just keep trusting him. But sometimes we get tired of trusting him, hello somebody, and we want to do our own thing. We say, Lord, I'm tired of waiting on you. Now I'm going to step out and go my own course. And he said, go right here. <laughs> here. Then we find ourselves, yes, in a place, in a situation, when if we had waited on him, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen our heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Sometimes God puts us in the waiting room. Now he don't tell us how long we're going to be in there. <laughs> Have you ever been on a call, you're trying to call, trying to do something, or pay a bill or talk to somebody, and boy, they got you on hold, and that music just playing, and you're like, man, are they going to ever pick this phone up? That's the way we feel about God sometimes, that sometimes he has us in a waiting position, but guess what? In that waiting position, you need to be saying, Lord, what are you trying to say to me while I'm waiting? Because there might be something he's trying to do on the inside of you. To see, you pressing him so hard to get that next thing. But God is saying, no, I've got some things I've still got to do in you. So now I need for you to sit and wait a little while. But while you're in the waiting room, still continue to speak to him and see what he's trying to do in your life. Because God is always working while you're waiting. Come on, the Bible says he never sleeps, no slumbers. So God is always working on your behalf. Not only um, can we live, uh, don't have to live the loneliness of heart, but we don't have to worry whether God will provide for us. Early in his ministry, Jesus told us followers that his father who takes care of the birds, grass, flowers, who would also provide for their needs. This promise would have meant nothing had Jesus been just a man, but because he is the son of God who overcame death, we can know and trust his word. A lot of you ain't been in here when I told this story. I know y'all saying, Pastor, you done told this story about three or four times. But they weren't here. We went to Bojangles. Brother Bay, sometimes you can see in motion how the word will come alive right before your eyes. I saw this bird over by the dumpster. No, 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 big old biscuit. I mean, that biscuit was so big, he could have ate on that thing probably for about three weeks. And I told Lady B and Cam, I said, look at that bird right there. And he tells us in Matthew that he, we don't have to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. That bird already knew, just like I told y'all, I heard him chirping early in the morning. That bird already knew that God was going to make provisions for him. So why do we keep working about things when God has done it one time? He's done it two times. He's done it three times. If he's done it before, baby, he'll do it again. I wish I had somebody here that say, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to stop worrying, and I'm going to put it in God's hands and know that he will and he can work it out for me. So the bird was eating, knowing that the Lord would provide for him. Are we not more important than a bird to him? So why won't he provide for us? Why won't he make provision for us? All we have to do is wait, trust, lean, and depend on him. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not into our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. No, a lot of times we don't understand. But you ain't supposed to understand everything. If you could understand everything he was doing, it wouldn't be no need for you to have faith. 
The just walk by faith, not by sight. So if he could show you everything that he was trying to do in your life, it would be no reason for you to trust him and have faith. No situation of me is too large for his almighty sovereign hands. In his perfect time and way, he will provide whatever we need. I told a story one time, it was a lady and her son, he, they went to the store and the, uh, the, the man behind the counter told the little boy, he said, listen, put your hand in there and get you some candy out. And the little boy said, no. <laughs> He said, I want you to give it to me. So the man proceeded and he put his hand in the car and gave it to the little boy. So when they got in the car, they were on their way home. His mama looked at him and said, why wouldn't you put your hands in the jar and get the candy? He said, because his hands were bigger than mine. <laughs> and you get them on the way home. See, every now and then, we need to wait on God because guess what? His hands are bigger than our hands. I don't know about you, but I want God to give me the biggest and best blessing that he can give me. Is there anybody in here that says I'm going to wait on God because his hands are bigger than mine? We can have a godly and powerful influence in the lives of others. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told us that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Through the power of his indwelling spirit, we can be an influential light in this dark world and a preserving flavor in our society. As we look around now in this world that we're living in, we see that this world is in a state of chaos. We see everything that should be right is wrong. I'm going to tell you, I see more stuff. I, I work at teach at a middle school, and I see more stuff with these middle schoolers. It blows my mind. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you something. I just can't believe some of the things that come out of their mouth. I'm talking about sixth graders. 11, 12 years old. I'm like, what you just say? <laughs> I didn't know nothing about that stuff when I was there. But it's their environment, it's their home life, it's what they're being exposed to. Yeah, yeah. And as we look, y'all, listen, people are looking for something real. Yeah. I can't say that enough, that we've got to be the light. He says, let your light so shine that men might see your good works. Then they'll give him glory because he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Understand, we've got to allow his spirit to indwell in us so that we can go out and make a difference in this world and make a mark that the enemy cannot erase. That's why it's time now for us to keep playing church. We've got to become the church. To go out in this world because people are hurting, people are dying. These kids are dying in these games. But I just thank God that he's placed me there that I've impacted a lot of lives at that school. And I say, Lord, if I can just reach one, then I've done a service. So we need to understand that we need to get serious about our walk with God. I say this all the time. Our lives might be the only Bible somebody might ever read. So that when you profess to be a believer, now you're under the microscopic eye of scrutiny that people are watching you and you don't know who's watching your life. Somebody is looking at you saying, I want to be like that. They know it's something different. There's something. And it's up to us to show them how to get it. So we have to make sure that we are walking in the light. That we are representing him. He tells us in his word that we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is a high-ranking official. No, you might not have a badge on, baby, but somebody ought to be able to see something in you that says that I'm walking with Jesus Christ. They ought to be able to see something in your DNA. There's something about the way you walk, about the way you talk, because people can see the light in your eyes, oh, yeah. even when you hide behind the mask. That's right. That's right there. Well, people are looking for something real. Yeah. We should not blend in with the world. Instead, we should have a positive impact on others just as seasoning brings out the best flavor in food. 
That's why he tells us to be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. Understand that God has called us to be transformers and not conformers. It's time out for us to be, stop being camouflaged Christians. <laughs> that we're always blending in with the world because we don't want nobody to know who we truly serve. Closet Christians. Come on out the closet. Say, for God I live, for God I die. Hold up the bloodstained banner for Jesus Christ and let people know who you repping. And as the kids say, keep it 100. Up. But people are looking for something real. And then we experience the Holy Spirit within us. That's the only way that we can impact the lives of others, that we have to have that experience of the Holy Spirit within us. Although the disciples had been with Jesus for three years, they were not equipped to complete the work he'd given them until the Holy Spirit came to indwell and empower them. That's why Christ told them to stay in Jerusalem until they received the promise, the promised spirit in Acts 1 and 4. This same spirit who came to them also lives within every person who has trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He's the one who opens our eyes. He helps us understand that Jesus died in our place so our sins could be forgiven and we could be saved. Aren't you glad that he paid the price for you? Yeah. That he took care of your past sins, yeah. your current sins, yeah. and your future sins? Yeah. That God paid it all. Your debt has been paid. Yeah. And you know that stamp when you pay a bill. You know how good it feels when you pay a bill on your debt. They, they stamp that thing. Paid debt paid in full. <laughs> That's what Jesus did for us. He paid your sin debt so that we might have a right to the tree of life. And I'm glad about it. I'm trying to get the cabin, but let me slow down a little bit. If we, I lost my place. <laughs> when we repent and believe in Christ, His Holy Spirit seals us as children of God. And no one can ever break that seal. Jesus' resurrection makes our salvation certain and secure and unbreakable. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that I have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. That that seal cannot be broken. That he loved me and he sealed us. The only one who can break that seal is me if I walk away from him. But now that you are in him, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will comfort them and guide them to know his truth. Remind them of Jesus' words and give them the right words to say and fill them with power. Understand that now that we are out here, listen, God has called us, no, he has commanded us to go and make disciples. I hear you. I ain't a reverend. I ain't a minister. It doesn't matter. If you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior and you claim him to be Lord of your life, he has given us a command. To go out, make other disciples. Understand, how can I make disciples? You can tell somebody about what he's done in your life. Understand that what we go through, these tests that we go through, they're not for us, but it's for us to help somebody else. You can't have a testimony without a test. So when you go through your test, then you'll be able to share with somebody, listen, I know you're going through a hard time right now, but guess what? Let me tell you what the Lord did for me. That's a way for you to witness, and then God will open that door, and you just merge right in there. And as you are speaking to them, as you are sharing with them, as you become transparent with them, guess what? The Holy Spirit is working on their heart. The Holy Spirit is working on their heart. And all of a sudden, they might start crying. Or they might say, how can I receive him today? Because when you allow him to work through you, 
He will use you in ways unimaginable. He'll use you in moments and in ways and times that you didn't even expect. All you got to do is be walking with him. But be careful when you say, Lord, I want you to use me. Because when you say, Lord, use me, use me for your service. <laughs> Yes. Well, when we begin to share with individuals about the goodness of the Lord, and then you, you get caught up and you start getting happy, and you, they wonder why you're getting all excited because you can't keep it to yourself. Because when you begin to look back over your life, you begin to cry like the psalmist if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I wish I had somebody here to say, brother, you don't know why I've been, but I there's been some times in my life when I didn't think I was going to make it. But God brought me through. There were some times when I couldn't see my way, when I couldn't, I had more month than money, but God, a check showed up in the mail. I wish I had somebody. to say, God will supply all of my needs according to the riches of the glory. There was a time I had a sickness in my body. But then when I went back to the doctor, they couldn't find nothing. Is there anybody in here that said that had to be his power? It was nothing but the power of the Holy Ghost that was on me. Because he began to work some things out in my life. Not only must we experience him, but we can have peace in the midst of most difficult times. Before his crucifixion, Jesus told his disciples, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Christ's peace is like an anchor that sustains us in life's storms. Every now and then we find ourselves in the storms of life. You might be coming out of a storm or you might be going into a storm. And for you young people, you just keep on living. Some storms going to come in your life. But if you build a foundation on Jesus... How many of you know he'll see you through the storm? Because he'll be your anchor in the storm. When the wind starts blowing, and when the waves get up too high, you can say, Jesus, come and see about me. And I don't know about you, when the storms of life rage in my life, I just keep on trusting in Jesus because he will come and see about me. If you don't believe me, come here to sight. And they'll tell Jesus told them, let us go to the other side. He didn't say, can we go to the other side? He said, let us go to the other side. And you know the story that midway in the Galilean Sea, we know that a storm began to rise up. Jesus had went down in the stern of the ship. He was sleeping, trying to rest. But the waves began to rock the boat. The wind began to howl. And the disciples became fearful. They, they, they said, Master, Master, cares you not that we're about to perish. And Jesus came up on the deck of the ship, tired, trying to rest. <laughs> what in the world wrong with y'all? How is it that you still have no faith? Now, you've been walking with me, you been watching me preach, you've seen me perform miracles, you've seen me do all of these things in the name of my father. Yeah. And you upset about a little wind and a little water. Yeah. Jesus said, peace, be still. Yeah. The waves laid down and the wind stopped out. Yeah. And they crossed on over the Galilean Sea. Yeah. And every now and then, waves will begin to rock our boats. Yeah. Winds will begin to blow in our lives. Yeah. But when we call on Jesus, how many of you know Jesus will come and see about you? Jesus will come and carve your stone. Because every time I'm in a storm, when I begin to call on Jesus, he comes to see about me. So the disciples cruised on over. And a lot of times when you See storms, it could be raging on top of calm and serene down under. That's why we have to make sure our roots are running deep in the word of God. 
so that on the surface, storms might be rocking our lives. But now under the surface, we've got a foundation that's built on the word of God. That will be our anchor that although we might rock, we might um, rock a little bit, we're not going to break under pressure because we realize that we've got his word down on the inside of us. So he never forsakes us, but he sits at the right hand working on our behalf. Jesus understands our weakness and is always with us to take us through our difficulties and help us become the people he desires us to be. And then we can face death courageously, boldly, and confidently. Jesus is alive and is the source of our eternal life. If he's our Savior, church, we will enter immediately into his holy presence when we die. Because Jesus lives, we never truly die, but live forever with him. That's why Paul said to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Because Paul understood that when my earthly days are over, that when I close my eyes, that I know I'm going to be with Jesus one day. And I don't know about you, church, but I came by to tell somebody this morning that God is not dead, that he's still alive. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Is there anybody in here that's glad to know you've got Jesus in your life? Well, if I could call on Peter, Peter would tell you that we were sitting out on the water and we saw something coming with appeared to be a ghost. And the Lord said, be not afraid, it is only I. And Peter said, and Lord, if it's you, command me to come. The Lord said, come on, Peter. Let me see the moon walk on that water. <laughs> so Peter stepped out of the boat. And Peter started walking on the water. Yeah. But all of a sudden, the wind began to stir up around Peter. Yeah. And Peter took his eyes off the Lord. Yeah. And when he took his eyes off the Lord, Peter began to sink. Yeah. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Yeah. And there might be somebody in here this morning. You might be saying I'm sinking in my mess. You might be saying the storm has been too strong in my life. And you might be like Peter. You might be sinking. All you got to say is, Lord, save me. And God will come and pull you up. He pulled me up out of my mess. You see, I was tore up from the floor. I wasn't fit to live, nor was I ready to die. But Jesus knew my story. All I had to do was open up my heart and let him come and suck with me. And I'm telling somebody this morning, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you've got to do is open up your heart. He wants to come and suck with you. Is there anybody in here? Can you give God a praise? Has he been good in your life? That's why the cause he lives. I can face tomorrow. It does not matter what comes in my life. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus because he will see me through. Is there anybody in here? Do you know that he'll see you through? That's why the hymn writer says it like this. He says, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth living just because he lives. Is there anybody in here? Aren't you glad that he lives today? Let me tell you something, church. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And his name is Jesus Christ. And I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him. I'm going to keep on praising him every day of my life. And if I could call Jesus, he would tell you that they were praising me one minute. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. But then the next minute they said, crucify him. That's too much power for one man to have. But I'm so glad that he 
that Jesus kept his eyes on his father. He kept on preaching. He kept on teaching. He kept on performing miracles. But all the while, they were conspiring against him. And let me put a pin right there. When you begin to do the Lord's work, people will begin to hate on you. People will begin to talk about you. People will begin to conspire against you. But keep your eyes, keep your eyes on Jesus. Because he will, I said he will, give you the power that you need. So Jesus kept on walking the dusty roads of Jerusalem. He kept on doing his ministry till they took him through an unjust courtroom. But he never said a mumbling word. But I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad the story doesn't end there. Oh, you know the story. They took him up to God Arthur's hill. They laid him down on an old rugged cross. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. They raised him up for the world to see. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that the story doesn't end there. They laid him down in an old bar of tomb. And he laid there Friday and Friday night. He laid there Saturday and Saturday night. But soon, I said soon, early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up, he got up with all power in his hands. Can you give him a praise for his power? Aren't you glad for his power? Aren't you glad for his grace? Aren't you glad for his mercy? Aren't you glad that he died for you? Can you praise him? Will you praise him? Somebody, anybody, everybody, open your mouth, open your mouth, give them a praise, give them a praise, ain't he alright, ain't he alright, every day I got to praise him because he's been too good, he's been too good, has he been good to you, has he been good to you, has he been good to you? Open your mouth, open your mouth, tell them thank you, tell them thank you. Ain't he all right, ain't he all right, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Won't he do it, won't he do it, give him a praise, give him a praise, hallelujah, 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 shout yeah. I can face tomorrow. Does not matter what's going on in your life. Storms might be raging in your life. But if you got Jesus, how many of you know that he'll bring you through them storms? Well, sometimes you wonder how I got through it. Sometimes you wonder how did I make it over? It was nothing but Jesus that pulled you through everybody standing. Everybody stand. There might be somebody here today that might not know this Jesus that I just preached about. You might be saying, I've been wrestling in my own strength. I've been fighting these battles in my own power. If you're doing that, you're fighting a losing battle. Because you can't do it in your own strength. But when you allow him to come in, when you allow him to fight your battles, you will be victorious. He didn't tell us that the road would be easy, but he said that he would be with us all the way to the end of the age. And I don't know about you, but I made up in my mind that I'm going with Jesus all the way. That when my traveling days are over, that when I've run my course and I've finished 
the work he was signed to my hands. I want to hear him say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Is that your declaration? Is that what you want to hear him say one day? Don't play with me now. Do you want to hear him say, well done. Well, that was pretty weak then. That was not convincing. So for those of you who don't know him as your Lord and Savior, you might fool me, but you can't fool him. It's getting late in the evening. The sun is going down. When you close your eyes, where do you want to spend eternity? Because hell is real. Please understand. Do you want to spend your life in torment with the rest of your life? Or do you want to spend eternity with Jesus? I want to spend eternity with him. So if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, if you have not accepted him, understand that he wants to be in a relationship with you. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With confession and belief, you can have salvation today. Whether we want to say that's me to accept him today as my Lord and Savior. Well, you may be saying, I have Christ, I have church, but I need restoration. I need to be restored back in fellowship with him. My old ways began to pull and tug at me, and now I am out of the ark of safety. But now I want to reconnect with Jesus. It's kind of like Sometimes we stray away and you know how you, you see an old friend you hadn't seen in years and when y'all reconnect, it's just like you pick back up from yesterday, just like y'all were never apart. That's the way it is. Although you may have strayed away, when you come back and reconnect with him, he said, we just going to pick it up right here. I'm not concerned about what you were doing when you walked away from me. My main concern is that you turn back to me. And you came back to me. It's like the prodigal son when he left home and he squandered everything that he had. All of his inheritance. Just foolish. And that's the way we are sometimes. We are foolish. And we do foolish things. But he came to his senses. And came to himself. And he was down wallowing with the pigs, with the swine. And he must have had a revelation to say, what in the world am I doing? When I've got a father at home that loves me so much that he has the best back home waiting for me. And I'm out here wallowing in all this mess, doing everything and anything. He's been home praying for me. He's been anticipating me coming back. What did he do? He saw him from afar off. And he told his men, go get the best robe, go get the best, even the go get the best that I have and put it on him. I don't care what he looks like. I don't care what he smells like. I don't care where he's been. My main concern is that he's coming back home. And that's what Jesus is saying today, that my main concern is that you're coming back home. You're coming back to me because you understand that I love you enough that I wouldn't give up on you. Lord have mercy. Yo, that's love. That's love. That you can turn your back on him. Go do your own thing. Say, Lord, I don't want to be in a relationship. You can even say, Lord, I, I hate you. I don't want. And even throw your Bible away. Because you're mad at him. And you can turn back to him. And he said, Yes, Lord. Come on back. Come on back, son. Come on back, daughter. I still 
is of you. Repentance means I turn away from those things that go contrary to his word and I turn back to God because I realize that he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. But let me wonder these restoration. Well, you might be saying, I have Christ, I have church, I don't need restoration, but I'm looking for a new church home. Listen, and you may not hope to reunite with this church, but if you do, we would love to have you come be part of this brand new Zion. We know that God is doing some great things here, and God is going to use us to be a blessing in this community. Or if it's not this church, that might be a little church somewhere close to you. Just find you a church that's preaching and teaching the word of God. And unite with that church. And then seek the Lord to find out what your purpose is. And allow God to begin to use you, not for your own benefit, but for his glory. Because God wants to use you to help somebody else's life. To make somebody else's life better. So as he uses you, because we all should be just willing vessels servants for him that we want him to get the glory and he continues to shower the blessings on us whether it be one today amen I wish Jared was here I would tell Jared Jared I'm getting ready to close but I know you want to get that chick <laughs> and if he live streaming today Jared I hope they bring you some chicken on your trailer <laughs> No, Jared knows I love him. I just love to tease him about that chicken. <laughs> but I've been seeing him sitting right there. Yeah. Y'all continue to pray for him. But I pray that you receive something from this word today. Amen. Family, I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I pray that y'all will come again, Daryl. Good to see you, boy. Always Mike, it's good to see y'all, um, and I pray that y'all will come. Kenny, good to see you, man. Y'all will come and visit with us again. Vernon, man, I watch you all the time on Spectrum. <laughs> Vernon Turner, y'all. Amen. <laughs> but it's good to see y'all, and, and I pray that y'all will continue to keep y'all. Thank you again, Jennifer, for the gift. Um, I love y'all so much, and thank you, man. If y'all ever in the neighborhood, come, come be with us again. And all the other visitors that came to be with us, we thank God for y'all coming. Uh, Tiffany, I would like to see more of you, ma'am. <laughs> Bring my boys back to church. Come here, Kevin, Keon, come here. Y'all come here and give me a hug, man. I see y'all in there. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have towards you. Yeah. Plans of good, not of evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Yeah. So God, if we've lost our hope today, God, rekindle our hope right now. Yeah. That we will continue to trust in you, God. Knowing, God, that you're working everything out on our behalf. And Father, I ask that you be with the one that might not have stepped out on today. They may have felt afraid. They may have felt ashamed, God. But I pray that you might stir them up in their own time, that they might receive you as Lord and Savior, God. 
I pray for that one that may not have stepped out to be restored back to you, God, that you might touch them in their own private time. But Father, I pray most of all that we might hide your word in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. Help us, God, to be the church that you're looking for in these times that we live. So, Father, I pray for all of our visitors now that whatever they stand in need of, you meet each and every need right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, as we prepare to dismiss from your house but not from your presence, I pray that you will give us traveling mercies, that we might make it to our destination safely. And, God, as I always say, when we lie down on tonight, when we lie down, God, we know that you're watching over us, God, and if we're able to wake up in the morning, Help us to wake up with joy in our hearts and a praise on our lips because we realize this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, abide, keep and empower you now and henceforth and forevermore. And all the people of God said amen. 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 I love you. Have a blessed week and a blessed evening.